Nine. Uh, what was what number was that, Linda? Okay, uh, three three seven is what we're going to start with this morning. <clears throat> Redeemed. get your um, bulletins out here. We'll go over it real quick. Um, Pathfinders uh, are going to be conducting another Glowthon. We're doing a Glowthon fundraiser right now. We're asking for sponsors to donate. So if you haven't yet, you can see a Pathfinder. Um, not today, preferably. But um, contact us or the adults in some way, text us, call us, whatever, if you'd like to sponsor. Our goal is 3,000. We are at, um, we're at 1,900 last, last Sunday. So we've been working hard, um, passing out more today. <laughs> so we, we've been really working hard at it. The kids have had goals, too, weekly, and um, so they've been passing out a lot on their own, and we've been passing them out as a group. So, if, again, if you'd like to donate to that, not um, specifically today, but you can contact one of the adults, Pathfinders, um, Ms. Tracy. Okay. So did everybody hear Miss Tracy? Margie, did you hear her? Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, again, today, fellowship luncheon and um, Sabbath outreach. Um, and Pathfinders are going to be handing out glow tracks. Wednesday is prayer meeting. We're studying Romans. Um, as you can see, the pastor is out of town until the 31st. Um, next week is our 13th Sabbath program. So um, the adults have been working on the three angels message, and I think each um, uh, other Sabbath school has been working on a project or a verse or a song or something. Um, Women's Ministries is coming up first three weekends in April. They've already had sign up. But if you are signed up and you may need a ride or you need to know what we're taking or you know, it's not been, um, there's a group of us that are going, so if you are signed up but don't have a way, get a hold of us, uh, myself or Tracy, um, and we'll get you there. 
Elders meeting coming up April 4th. Family Life Vespers, April 5th at 6.30 p.m. here at the church. And then you can see there's some Pathfinders and Ventures meetings coming up and Adventure Fun Day at GLA, April 28th. Now, on May 3rd through the 5th, kids, you can go ahead and pass those out. Layla and Hannah, please. Um, the girls are going to hand this out. I have it right here. It says at the top, let's go camping. So May 3rd through the 5th, we're having a church camp out. And it's not just our church, but it's also going to be countryside together. We're trying to get everybody to camp for the whole weekend. We're going to worship together all weekend. Um, so anyways, and it's at our Daily Bread Campground, which is in Marcellus, and we will have maps available. Um, there is no expense to anybody. You just come. Now, I have to tell you, there is no electricity. We will not have electricity. There, um, they don't have uh, indoor bathrooms. It's only a, a pit toilet. Um, but they do have showers. They just don't have indoor toilets. We're going we're gonna to look into getting a couple of um, por porta pots um, just to help out since we don't, I don't, I'm going to see the area where we're going to be in in a couple weeks before we go, so I'll know what I need to make everybody comfortable. It's not going to be a regular indoor toilet, but we will have clean, non-smelling toilets, hopefully. We're not, not glamping. We're not glamping, <laughs> that's for sure. We are having outdoor service on Sabbath. This church and countryside both will not be open. They will be closed. You can come to the campground for the day for service. We're gonna, we'll do Sabbath school and service. Um, there is a pavilion there, and that's where we're probably going to do it. And then we will have um, probably haystack lunch after the service. So I'm going to have this um, sheet out here, sign-up sheet. Uh, it'll be hung on the bulletin board out here. So if you're going to go... Put your name. If you're camping, put an X under camping. If you're coming just for service, put an X there. If you're staying for lunch, put an X there. I need to know how many people to, that we need to prepare food for. So if you're coming even just for service, or if you're going to come and, for service and stay for lunch, I need you to fill this out, especially if you're camping, so I know how many spots I need to, how I need to arrange. So... Um, I think I put on here, yeah, please sign up for camping or service only by April 20th. So you got a couple weeks to think about it, but I need you to sign up by April 20th. If you don't sign up for, by April 20th, there may not be enough food for everybody. So, okay. So did any, everybody get one of these little, one of the bulletins? Yes. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, Layla, will you take that? Fine. Go, go, go find a pencil or a pen. Um, actually, I have one back there. Oh, Miss Phyllis has one. Okay, anything else? Anybody have any questions? Okay. We'll prepare for our service.
Good morning, Heavenly Father. Thank you for this beautiful sunshine that we have this morning. Thank you for this Sabbath day. Now, as we go into our worship service, Father, we ask that you would be here with us. Guide us in our thoughts, in our, our actions, in our speech. Father, give us a Sabbath day blessing. Let us go home t- today with the thoughts that we've been together, gathered here, to worship you and only you to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's turn in our hymnals to 321. 321. Jesus, I love thee. be seated. Our offering is for Michigan Advance Partners. The Etsy Seventh-day Adventist Church was in desperate need of repairs. The block walls of the building were being held together by steel cables. The roof was leaking in several spots, and many of the windows had been shut out by vandalizers. Esty is a country church, and there would be no way that members could afford to pay for all the renovation costs. However, thanks to Michigan Advance Partners and its generous donors, they got a new roof, siding, windows, and even a new sound system. Thanks to MAP, the light in SD will continue to shine and the doors will remain open. We are one family. Whether you attend a large city church or a small country church, MAP funds are there to help those who get in a pinch or just can't afford to make the repairs or renovations. 
please consider giving generously to MAP as you may be saving a light in the community. May the deacons come forward. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for these funds that we gather today. We just ask that you use these funds to help us with MAP and to renovate our churches. We thank you, dear Lord, for being with us today. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning <laughs> Happy Sabbath. You know, uh, Dick was gave me a card here. It says to the church. We haven't seen Pat around for a while, have we? Huh? Well, we called her on the phone. We went and visited her, right? And then uh, she she gave us a a card here that he wanted me to read. It says. I want to thank, and she's got that underlined, I want to thank everyone for the cards, the calls, and for the prayers that I know are going up to Jesus in my behalf. Things do seem to be getting better, or going better. Hope and pray we'll be back soon. Amen? Pat Salisbury. All right, we just hope she, she'll be back soon. I want to see her face here. Amen? Well, this is the time of uh, prayer and praise. You know, it, it, I have a praise. Yeah, we we'll get those. I was just thinking the other day when when I was praying to the Lord. You know, there's there's billions of people in this world, right? And in any one second or minute. People are praying to the Lord, and he's hearing all those prayers. If two people were talking to me at once, I couldn't understand what they were saying, right? But the Lord knows exactly what we're saying, each and every one of us, right? Individually, and he's answering those prayers individually to us. What a great and wonderful God we serve, amen? Amen. All right, is there praises out there this morning? Any praises this morning? Yes, Andrea. I am very thankful. As you notice, I don't have much of a voice. Um, I'm thankful to have my voice back, but I was so thankful this morning. We had 12 little people in my class this morning. <laughs> it was such a blessing, Amen. and we hurried and scurried here and there, but it was so wonderful to have so many little ones in the class today. Amen. Amen. All right. 
we went to Larry's kidney stone doctor, and what I thought was going to be one very large kidney stone is actually several very small ones close by. But he does have kidney stones in both kidneys, and he's just going to let them ride it out and see what happens. So it's kind of a praise and a prayer Never. request, Amen. but... <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thanks. All right. Naomi? Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I want to um, thank God and praise because, you know, God is always there. When, if we need him, we have a petition, you know, a request. He always answers our, our request, and I really believe that God is watching on us. Mm -hmm. uh, my first prayer was answered when uh, my husband was uh, in the nursing home, Heartland. Um, he was denied by the medic aid because in the nursing home, you can get medic aid if you earn a little bit money, that's it. And the wonderful thing, there was this expert woman that worked in the state, and she helped us how my husband can stay there for long, you know. Mm -hmm. And God answered prayer. I pray for them, these nice people, the manager there in Heartland and this woman. And finally, this last week when I was talking to the manager in Heartland, and uh, she said that um, your husband now will stay here for long. Mm -hmm. And so then when the bill came, I noticed it that uh, his pension social security will be uh, will go to the nursing home. And I know nursing home, if you are rich, you're gonna pay like 8,000 a month. Mm -hmm. And then I showed the manager the, the bill, you know, I talked to her and she told me uh, that is very high. I don't pay at once right now. I'm trying to fight for you to lower it down to one three like that. Mm. So that is how God really is there, you know. Just keep your trust and have faith. Amen. Secondly, we have a lot of bills that I'm paying, you know, those credits that I don't know how to pay it because I don't like to pay Branca Pri. That is life cheating, you know. And I was praying this week, Lord, I don't know. I don't want to do this. My friend was telling me, you, you can go bankruptcy so you'll be out of it. No, no, no way. And then this week, I called up the bank that we loan there. And I said, I want to make a loan since, you know, we have a balance. But I want this amount so I can pay only one bill every month, goes to the bank. And the next day, and I said, okay, I'm not sure if you're going to be approved. And then when I come home from working, I heard from the answering machine, and he was saying good news. It's just like, oh my gosh, this is really how good is the Lord, you know what? And I'm really relieved of it, and I'm so happy. I Amen. said, God, thank you so much, Lord, for being there all the time. Just, you know what? Have faith and trust in God, and God is there. I believe Amen. that so. It strengthens our faith. Now, my prayer request is that I have a bad this, you know, allergy, and at night I cannot sleep good because... My plume come down to my throat and make me cough, so I have to wake up to spit, spit, spit. And I cannot sing good because my voice, you know, it destroys also with this coughing. Uh, please pray for me that I can, you know, this kind of, you know, allergy, you know, and I know that God is the great healer. And I, this okay. is my prayer only, you know, and thank you. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you. Yes. Good morning. What a gorgeous morning it is. Yes, yes. Oh, it just is, I, I just love days like this. I like the coolness too. Um, this morning when I was out walking my schnauzer, I saw two tundra swans flying north. So that's, uh, guess where they nest. <laughs> so <laughs> they're on their way and March is waterfowl migration month. So it, it stands to reason that they're going. So that's awesome. A couple of weeks ago, uh, one evening when I got home from work, uh, my neighbor Diana was out walking her dog and I caught up with her. And during the course of conversation, she let it be known that she was taking uh, correspondence, Bible studies from this place in Colorado. 
And I said, really? <laughs> and, and, you know, because I played a little bit stupid. But anyway, um, and I said, so what lessons are you taking? And she said, you know, I don't know where they're from. I said, but what's the name of the lessons? Discovery. So she's getting truth with Voice of Prophecy lessons. Mm -hmm. And I asked her, where did you get those? Oh, I think I got them in the mail. Well, I kind of think an angel put them in her mailbox because nobody else around got them. <laughs> so I, I just think that that was, that was pretty cool. So we want to keep Diana in prayer. Diana does have some challenges, and uh, she um, has probably for about a year attending the little Snow Prairie Bible Church uh, up the way from where I go, and uh, the pastor there thinks he knows all about Adventists, and it's like, if you did, you'd be one. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, and she, she is, uh, I just pray for, for the Holy Spirit to open her mind, Amen. because uh, it, it just is, um, uh, she's a long believed in Gnosticism, and just kind of coming out of that, and uh, it, it just, uh, so I want to keep Diana in prayer. And then um, I had another miracle yesterday. Um, and it's one of, and I can unequivocally say that with any vehicle I've ever been driving, if some trouble had to happen, it always happens under the very best of circumstances. And uh, I, ha when I made right hand turns in the last couple of weeks, I've heard a little crunching in the rear right tire and, or in that neighborhood, and I'm thinking, oh my. And um, my brother had kind of done a little inspection a year and a half ago, and he said, oh, this is gonna need struts and so forth. And so I just, um, I had an appointment yesterday morning Everything is fine. I walked out of there with spending no money. And he even said, he, in particular, I didn't invite any information from him. He just let me know. Among the things that were fine, he specifically said struts. He says there's no rust or anything, and which kind of surprised me. But uh, I just praise God for his, his hand in the, the details of the small things. Amen. Thank you. Okay, um, a couple weeks ago, I, uh, when I was here last, I was telling you about um, my friend Walter. Um, we have had some ups and downs with him. Um, they did get him to go to a VA hospital, and then he walked out. Um, I personally spoke with him on the phone, which was, not, was really awesome because when I got the feedback from the team that is out there, they said that um, he was just a totally, it's like, you know, you just talk to him like he was just whatever, you know, like I've known him all my life. And he said, you know, he, they, they said that um, he was smiling and laughing and he, they have never seen him do that before. So, you know, I mean, I know that I'm far away, but, you know, I just feel like this is an awesome outreach with him. And I think that we're making progress. Like I said, we've had some ups and downs. He is now been admitted to a hospital and we are doing a 72 hour psych hold. So that way he can get cleaned up. Hopefully he will stay clean and sober. And um, the team right from there is going to handle things in a professional manner for him. But I'm just really, you know, I know that we had, that we, I mean, it's just like we're just tears of joy that he's even just even in a hospital and even accepting, you know, mm -hmm. something, some kind of help. And mm -hmm. it, he just, he, he's a re, he really, I spoke to him for about an hour and he's just a really nice man. He's, I just want you guys to keep praying for him because I think we can make some breakthroughs here. So keep praying for ministry in motion in California. Amen. All right. Thank you. Um, Shannon, back. Oh. Yeah. oh, sorry. <laughs> Kathy? Yes, Kathy Alexander. We need to keep her in our prayers. Amen. 
Shannon? Well, yesterday was my last day at Park. I have been there for six months working with Hydena, um, the learning disabled. And I would like to pray for James. He's a kindergartner and he's very attached to me. And he was very upset yesterday when his teacher told him that he wasn't going to get to see me anymore. But in the six months I've been there, James, who's never held a pencil correctly, after many days and nights of praying for him, he finally held his pencil correctly. Had to be a green colored pencil, but he did it. And he actually traced his letters and he knows 22 of 26 letters, but only 12 sounds. So I wanna pray for James that he continues to learn with ever, whoever his new teacher is going to be. But I wanna praise God that there will be no lapse in paychecks for me because I got hired in Portage as a para-pro, a lot less money, but a lot more potential of being a full-time teacher in a regular classroom of my own. Amen. So I wanna ask prayer that on my longer drive, I'm protected from deer and other vehicles and me falling asleep. And I wanna praise God that finally, my good friend and cousin Becky Holden is here she Amen. has taken the It Is Written Bible studies I gave her on her own. And this afternoon, we're starting on Doug Batchelor's new set via video and the historicals that he's redone. So she has a great interest in my belief, but she thinks I'm the only one that can explain it to her. So we're going to put Doug Batchelor in front of her, hopefully change that a little bit but mm -hmm. finally after about four months of the devil fighting with me she's here so and this is my friend becky if everybody her. wants to Amen. say hi and Amen. she's willing to stay for lunch too all right <laughs> so all right thank you Jan. thank you thank you tracy um i want to pray for judy um judy. she she was hoping to come today um and she even got her deviled eggs made um but she um while she was up making them, she was just out of breath too easy. So mm -hmm. she's um, staying home today, live streaming. So hi, Judy. Hi, hi Judy. Um, and she, uh, and, and then Kathy Alexander is recovering from bronchitis, so for her. And then Judy also requested um, that we pray for her brother, um, evidently yesterday evening sometime. Um, he started having some kind of heart problems and went by ambulance to the hospital. So she wanted prayer for her brother, Kenny. Chris? Um, I'd like to ask everybody to continue to pray for Kelly, and not just for her healing from her surgery, but um, for her spirituality. Um, mm -hmm. It seems like Kelly continually, it's just one thing after another goes wrong, and she, she's not seeing. I actually said to her a couple days ago, because she was whining, and I said, do you think somebody's trying to get your attention? Mm -hmm. And she just kind of looked at me. So, but it just seems like she she gets two steps ahead, and then it's four steps back. And I just feel like God's trying to get her attention, and she's mm -hmm. not heeding the. So, but if we could just pray for her, and hopefully she'll open her eyes and and for her healing because she can't work. Obviously, she couldn't work before she had the surgery. She can't work until the doctor releases her, so she has no paychecks coming in. Right. So it's been tough, but um, if we could just pray for Kelly. Thanks. Amen. Naomi? Before I forget, um, my husband's roommate, he's a skinny guy, and uh, the sickness is arthritis, that he could, not, he could hardly stand up. So I was talking to him. I said, don't you know that God can heal you? And then, oh, and then, okay, promise. I'm going to ask our group in the church to pray for you so you can walk again. And she was saying, oh, thank you, Naomi. Please pray for me. His name is Dwayne. Yeah. He, okay. Dwayne, his name. Dwayne. And also, let's pray for our missing members. Okay. And our family, you know, that is very important, and God knows everything. Thank you. 
What about silent requests? You know, I have them. For those that are able, would you kneel with me as we take to the Lord in prayer? My dear Heavenly Father, oh, dear Father, we're so we're so awe inspired by the God we serve. Thank you, Father, for all the blessings that you give us each and every day. Thank you, Father, for the wonderful weather we're receiving today and the sunshine and the fact that it's the Sabbath, Father, and we can come away from the world and, and be with you and be with our loved ones. Father, we are so blessed, and sometimes we, we don't even realize it. Sometimes we go about our business and, and uh, I'm sorry, Father, forgive us that sometimes we, we, we forget we forget who our Savior is and that he is wanting to have a relationship with us. But Father, uh, thank you for reminding us, even to the point where we go through trials and tribulation to get our attention. Father, we should, we should rejoice. We should rejoice in the fact that you want a relationship with us, and you are long-suffering towards us. Thank you, Father, for those blessings. Father, we have so many prayer requests this morning. We think of Walter and James and Diana and Dwayne and Kelly. We think of Judy and Kathy. Father, some of them need physical healing. Some of them, Father, need spiritual healing and spiritual awareness, as we all do. Father, we just pray that you would come into our hearts. Heal us, Father, spiritually. Heal us so that we can turn our face towards you and, and know that oh, you love us so much that you want us to be with you. Father, we long for that day. And we thank you, Father, that we have that promise of that day if, we, if you abide in our hearts and we abide in you. Father, help us to do just that, this day and every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. it's uh, time for our, our ministry moment. I believe, Tracy, did you have something? Pathfinders? The Pathfinders, all right. We're going to talk about ditch running. Um, okay, so the first thing, um, last week, um, I guess it was mostly Pathfinders and families. We went to Detroit. It was um, Global Youth Day. And uh, we went up to Detroit for services in Taylor. And then we went actually into the city. Um, some people went out to the streets. We actually went to one of the homeless shelters. And um, we had made up packs ahead of time. Um, blankets and toiletries and gloves and hats and scarves and things like that and then some snacks um, applesauce and um, um, like granola bars or something like that um, and then they split us up into groups so there was some other groups that were with us um, some brought food so we actually served a meal and then provided um, needs that they had um, you want to we went to what they call Yorba. It was an old hotel, 
And all of us up here have been to the homeless shelter in Centerville. And when you walk into the homeless shelter in Centerville, it's not a lot different than walking into church or walking probably into like all of your guys' houses. Mm -hmm. Really nice, you know, I mean, it's what we would say of a quality that we would want to live in. And the hotel at Yorba, um, it had old glass windows and in the kitchen, I guess it was, or the eating room, like you could see where there were holes in the wood and they simply just filled them in with that spray insulation that foams right up. And when I was sitting kind of on the, by the windows, you could just feel the wind coming in. I thought I was standing outside for a while. Um, the bathroom was quite small. Um, and there was probably four or five floors. I think there was four. Four. Yeah. Four floors of rooms. They housed normally about 70 people. Um, and we were there, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 people came down. Most of them were men. Um, we had one lady. Uh, Mr. Roberts got a chance to talk to two of them, and they actually both have a job, but the job is like just enough to survive, so they still live at the homeless shelter. Um, we did have a gentleman that wanted us to pray for him. Mm-hmm. We, um, the, the housing, we went upstairs to, um, they didn't allow us to knock on doors, but we walked down the halls and said, free blankets, gloves, hats, whatever we had, and just yelled it out to them, and if they wanted to come down, they could. But as I, I, I just remember walking down those halls, it just, it was, kind of spooky thinking about it and that they have to live like this there's like door after door after door they must have a bed and that's probably it a toilet and a shower at the end of these halls and i didn't even see exits like if there was to be a fire it was just kind of scary so we need to pray for these people and if ever you see anything about um donating clothes and and toiletries and stuff like that they're in great need and there's there's many reasons why these people are homeless we don't know what they are and it's not our our job to judge we need to just love like jesus did we need to meet their needs so it it, it was quite um it was a definitely a different outlook yeah per se you know like when we go around centerville it's it's different even even the there's the domestic assault shelter in in three rivers it's still it's, it's kept up, it's maintained, it's, it's, you know, of a higher standard. Um, anything else? No, All right, I think Ms. Tracy has announcements. Um, well, I just wanted to share um, an experience. Um, while we were there, we, we kind of like lined the walls of the dining room area, and we had uh, the packs that we had made up, and we were with another, uh, another church group. Um, Adventist church group that had made up some packets and so those were kind of set up around the edge and so when the uh, people would come in they gave them a a plastic bag and then there was some soup and sandwiches that uh, the other group had made so they got their bowl of soup and sandwiches and then they went around and kind of put the stuff that they needed um, in the plastic bag. Um, The goal was we were you know we wanted to be able to interact with them Um, But there was probably about 40 of us lining, so it was very intimidating when these people would come down, you know, and there's all these people kind of staring at them. So most of them would just get their stuff and head back upstairs. Mm -hmm. Um, There were a couple that stayed um, and ate, um, and I think Joe was able to talk with with some of them. Um, We were at the end right as they were heading out, so we kind of, as we were giving them stuff, um, tried to talk to them a, a little bit. There was one gentleman who um, said, you know, thank you for, for showing the love to your neighbor. Um, and he was, he was very appreciative. Um, and I asked, well, would you mind if, if we prayed with you? And he kind of hesitated. And I said, or for you? And he said, yeah, that would be good. So then he left. Um, and then uh, Amy and Kaylee and I prayed together for him. Um, so it's, we, we weren't able to interact maybe as much as we would have liked to, um, but we were there um, showing showing Jesus love. So, did you want to share about the man afterwards? 
we had a few things left over afterwards because they, we didn't have a lot of people come down. Evidently, earlier in the day, a different church group had been there, so they'd already been fed. Um, so we didn't get a lot that had come down. So with some of our leftover supplies, we were kind of trying to drive the streets to see if we could see anybody who need, but it's sometimes hard to tell who's homeless and who's not. There's lots of people shopping and walking out with a bag, or so you don't know if they're just coming from the store or, or what. There was one gentleman that we decided looked homeless. Um, he, had a, he actually had a shopping cart full of groceries, but he was across the street from the grocery store. So we assumed that maybe he was just taking it somewhere. So we pulled up alongside of him um, and asked, could you use any personal care items or a blanket? And he said, well, I could use a blanket. So we, we handed him one of the blankets and he said, thank you. And as we were driving away, he was giving us a thumbs up. So um, it was, it's nice to be able to, uh, to help people. So, all right. Um, so, I just want to bring to your attention or remind you that we are in the middle of a glowathon. And we, do you remember how many we had? 19? <laughs> By last Sunday, we, our goal is 3,000 by April 13 or 14. And by last Sunday, we had passed out a total of about just over 1,900 glow tracks. So we're doing very, very well. We're very excited about it. It's a lot of fun when we go out in groups together and do this. And on April 13, the day before, um, we're doing it today, so you're welcome to join us. But also on April 13, the day before the Glowathon ends, we're doing it one more time, and we're going to be promoting health. And we're going to have a little. Um, card that says another raisin to smile so we need these little boxes of raisins on the back of the card will there'll be four benefits of smiling because there are benefits health benefits to having a positive attitude and smiling and then we'll have a um, health tract attached to it that's about attitude so what we are hoping that you will help us do is collect these little tiny boxes of raisins they're about a half an ounce they come in bags like this um, they are, it's a six ounce bag and there's 20 mini boxes. They're the mini boxes, not, there's some that are a little bigger than this, but we need the tiny ones so that they fit on our card because we're going to either tape them or glue them right on our little card. So if you have it in your heart, I think that they're $2.12 at Walmart. <laughs> um, okay, or two thirty nine dollars at Meijer. Anyways, if you would like to donate some of these, we would appreciate it because we need at least 300, but we do have 400 of the glow tracks that go with this outreach. So we'll take as many as you'd like to donate. You can bring those and leave them at prayer meeting or at church, give them to Tracy or anybody involved in Pathfinders, and we will greatly appreciate it. And then if you really want some fun and excitement, you just plan to come with us on April 13 when we hand them out because it is so much fun to hand out little things. Ask the kids. It was so much fun handing out the apple cider packs when we did it. So anyways, please uh, get us some raisin boxes and uh, then join us if you want on April 13. Thank you. Our scripture reading is in 2 Peter 1, 5 through 8. Second Peter 1, 5 through 8. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now it's time for our children's story. 
And I hear we have a lot of children today. So if you'll go back and grab those baskets in the back there and go through the aisles there and collect the, the offering, children's offering. Um, Tracy has it. Miss, Miss Dick, Mrs. Dickerson has it today. Does anybody have any offering left that the kids have missed? If you do, raise your hand, because we don't want anybody to miss out on the blessing of giving, especially the smiling kids that come and get it from you. All right, looks like you guys did very well today. Good morning. How are you guys doing this morning? Did you guys have a good night's rest last night? Yes. You didn't? Yes. Oh. When you don't get a good night's rest, don't you kind of just feel, oh, during the whole day? No? Well, then you must have gotten more rest than you thought you did. <laughs> because when I don't get enough rest, sometimes I get a little grumpy. I have a hard time staying awake at times that I should. And so sleeping is very important, isn't it? Well, my story today is about tired Timmy. Timmy was always tired. At school, sometimes he'd lay his head down on his desk and he'd fall asleep. Sometimes he'd go out to recess and he'd just kind of lay in the shade and watch the other kids play. He was always tired. In fact, it got so bad that the kids didn't even want him on their team anymore because he just he, didn't, he just didn't feel like playing. He just was sitting around. And one day, when he fell asleep in class and started snoring, the teacher thought, I, we need to do something about this. So he called Timmy's mom. And she asked, is Timmy sick? Mom said, no, I don't think so. He's, he seems fine. He hasn't said anything. The teacher said, has he been getting enough sleep? His mom said, I, I think so. Because the, te the teacher said, because he's just always tired in class. He's always tired. And mom said, well, I don't know, but I'll check on it. So she thought, I'm going to have to keep a closer eye on Timmy and see maybe, maybe there is something wrong and we need to get it checked out. So Timmy came home from school, and he went into the living room, and he sat down in front of the TV and turned on his favorite TV program and was watching it. And mom thought, well, you know, he needs a little bit of a break. Well, she came back when she was starting to cook supper, and he was still watching TV. And she said, Timmy, haven't you been watching that long enough? He said, well, this program's almost done. I'll, when it's done, I'll, I'll get off. So she went back to, to cooking supper, and uh, when she called him for dinner, he was still watching TV. And she thought, Timmy, we don't, you don't need to be on the TV this much. When t when when supper's over, you're going to go outside and play. So when supper was over, she shooed Timmy outside, and he went outside to play. And he came back in at bedtime and went to bed. And after a little while, Mom went to bed too. But she, she got up a little while later, and she heard something. And she went out to the living room 
Do you know what she saw? Timmy was watching TV again. And she said, Timmy, you are supposed to be in bed. And Timmy said, I know, but this is a special program, and it's only on tonight, and I had to watch it. And Mom said, no, you don't. You go to bed right now. So he went to bed. And when he got up for breakfast the next morning, Mom said, Timmy, now I know why you're so tired. You have been wasting so much time on the TV that you're not getting the fresh air and exercise that you need. You're rotting your brain with that TV. She said, for this next week, you are not watching any TV, none at all. And Timmy said, not even my favorite program. And she said, nothing. And she said, after that, maybe we can allow one. But this week, we're cutting it off. And Timmy thought, oh, he was going to miss out. On, he wasn't going to know what was happening in his favorite program. It was awful. But he had to obey Mom because Mom was watching him. And so he didn't watch any TV. And you know what? By the end of the week, he was starting to feel better. He was staying awake in class. He actually felt like running and playing softball with the other kids. And so the, there was a big difference. So when the next week came and he was allowed to watch one program, he picked one, but he didn't, he didn't stay up all night watching it. And he didn't sit in front of the TV till dinner watching it. He didn't watch it after dinner. And so, we need to remember how important it is to guard our minds and to make sure that we take advantage of the health benefits that Jesus has given to us. Did you know it's important what we eat, right? What we put into our bodies? It's very important. If we ate junk food all the time, would our bodies be healthy? No. And we have to be careful what we put into our minds too, don't we? If we watch junk all the time, are our minds going to be healthy? No. God wants us to guard our minds. He wants us to be careful what we put in there because he wants health through our whole bodies, doesn't he? So I want you guys to think about that. Some people don't have a problem with that. Some people kind of get addicted to TV. It can be an addiction. So I want you guys to think about that. If you're watching too much TV, maybe ask Jesus to help you stop and take advantage of the fresh air and other things he's given us, okay? All right, shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings you've given us of our bodies. We thank you for the marvelous ways that you've created them. And we ask that you would please help us to take care of our bodies the way that you know is best for us, that will keep us healthy and happy. Please help us against the temptations that Satan throws at us, Give us the strength to resist him and to follow you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you go back to your seats. And now we have some special music from the primary class. All right.
Thank you. That was wonderful. Keep your heart in tune. Amen? Amen. Happy Sabbath. I don't know why I'm messing with this. I've got one on here. So. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, now it's time, Father, that we, we hear you. We hear you in our hearts. Father, I pray that you would uh, just use me as a tool. That the words that I speak, Father, <clears throat> come straight from you. Um, let, let me step aside. Thank you for this opportunity that we can hear your word, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. The title of my sermon this morning... It's still morning, by the way. The title of my sermon is Striding Home. You know, as, as Christians, this, this world is not our home. We are, we are in this world, but we're not of this world. We're on an exodus, right? A, a journey through this world. And we're on our way to our, our true home, actually. It's a, it's a walk of faith, if you will. But more than that, we should be striding in our faith. You know, a stride is, is a, a walk with long, regular steps, briskly and energetically, right? You know, briskly, it's a stride, you know, you're striding home, right? You're striding. You're not, you're not slow walking, right? You're not, oh, man. You know, have any of you ever heard, heard Eeyore, right? Oh, well, if I have to, you know, this is that. It's not that, right? It's not Laodicean walk, right? It's a striding home, energetically. You know, I can remember when I took my training in the Air Force, I took it at an Army base, go figure, but it was, it was Fort Belvoir, Virginia, which is just outside of Washington, D.C. I mean, it's just right on the outskirts of Washington. And uh, one weekend we had off for some strange reason. We didn't have to do anything. We, they, they just gave it off. And uh, another airman and myself, we decided we were going to go to Washington, D.C. and see all the sights, right? So we took a bus from Fort Belvoir into, into Alexandria, into, into Washington, D.C., and we got off the bus. And, of course, we wanted to see all the sites, right? We wanted to see the Washington Monument. We wanted to see the Capitol Building. We wanted to see the Jefferson Memorial. We wanted to see the Smithsonian Institute. We wanted to see Ford Museum, the Supreme Court Building. We wanted to see it all, right? <laughs> we didn't have a car, right? So how are we going to get there? We're going to walk, right? This gentleman, his name was Mizuno. He was a, of Japanese ancestry. He was about as tall as I was, but he had really, really long legs. And boy, his stride, I mean, his, he, was, he, was, he was hiking it, right? And I had to actually practically run to keep up with him. It was, he was that fast. And we got to see a lot of sights that day because we were on the move. You know, as Christians, we all have our own stride in our faith, amen? I mean, you know, some of them are shorter than others, but they all should be energetic, right? And, and, and brisk, right? A stride in our faith, amen? That's what I'm trying to get at. Did you know that you were, you were created for a special purpose? Did you know that? Turn with me in our Bibles to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, and verse 10. Ephesians 
Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Say amen when you're there. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 reads, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You're God's workmanship, right? And you were created in Christ to do good works. You can just hear a Pharisee going, Aha! I knew works fit in our salvation somewhere, right? But, but no, we, we, we need to read our Bibles in context, amen? Uh, we're well acquainted with the, first, with the verses right before this, right? Verses 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So then, what, what, what works is Paul talking about here? You know, one word or one phrase can, can change the meaning of something completely. For instance, i got a s- small slideshow here. Um, this came from a, a doctor's office. From his medical files, he found some... Well, a few mistakes in the medical files. If somebody wrote down a different phrase or a different, different word, and, and just for a little bit of levity here, the first one he found here says, the patient refused autopsy. Right? You can think about that. Right? The patient has left white blood cells at another hospital. Right. <laughs> Patient has chest pain if she lies on her left side for over a year. On the second day, the knee was better, and on the third day, it disappeared. The patient has been depressed since she began seeing me in 1993. She's numb from her toes down. I know some people that are numb from their head down, but not their toes, right? The skin was moist and dry. What? Occasional, constant, infrequent headaches. Sometimes you just got to think of that. What? Patient was alert and unresponsive. We got a couple more here. Rectal examination revealed a normal sized thyroid. <laughs> yeah, that got me too. I didn't even know if I wanted to put that on here, but okay. <laughs> I saw your patient today who was still under our car for physical therapy. Skin, somewhat pale, but present. And patient has two teenage. Has two, two na- <laughs> Patient has two teenage children, but no more abnormality. abnormality. I can't even say it. Right. So what I'm getting at, again, is, is, is one word or one sentence you know, can make a difference in, in, in the whole meaning of things. So let's turn to our scripture reading this morning. 2 Peter chapter, two, Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter one. This morning we had verses five through eight. I think I want to start in verse one. Second Peter chapter one. Say amen when you're there. You all got there before I did, didn't you? It says I'm not even there yet. <laughs> I was in 1 Peter, 2 Peter, chapter 1. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. 
as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Then goes on, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence. Read all diligence. That sounds like work, does it not? Giving all diligence. But that phrase before it, but also for this very reason, changes that outlook, right? What reason, Paul or Peter? What reason? Well, because he's given us all things, right? Those great and precious promises. He's given us. He's given us life. Amen? He's given us all these things. And then we've fallen in love with him. And for that reason, and that reason only, right? That we should add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge self-control. And to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will ne- be, be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who acts these things is short-sighted even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For, for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I was reading in Steps to Christ about this very thing, about works. Sit in in our idea of works, right? You know, we are we were saved at Calvary, amen? We're saved when we accept the Lord. And then we think, okay, um, I'm free from sin now, but now I've got to maintain that, right? But that's wrong-headed. I mean, if we can't save ourselves, we can't maintain it by ourselves either, amen? She says, many have an idea that they must do some part of the work alone. They have trusted in Christ for their forgiveness of sin, but now they seek by their own efforts to live aright, by which every such effort, but every such effort must fail, she says. Jesus says, without me you can do how much? Nothing. Nothing. Our growth in grace, our joy, our usefulness, all depend on our union with Christ. It is by communion with him daily and hourly, by abiding in him, that we grow in grace. He is not only the author, but the finisher for our faith. It is, it is Christ's first, last, and always. He is to be with us, not only at the beginning and at the end of our course, but at the, every step of the way. David says, I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Man, that's Psalm 16, 8. A couple more paragraphs here. Do you ask, how am I to abide in, in Christ? How am I to do that? You ask that. How do, how do I do that? In the same way you received him at first. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so ye walk in him. The, the just shall live by faith. Colossians 2, 6 and Hebrews 10, 38. You gave yourself to the Lord to be his holy, to serve and obey him, and you took Christ as your Savior. You cannot yourself atone for your sins or change your heart. Couldn't do it on your own. But having given yourself to God, you believe that he, for Christ's sakes, did all this for you. By faith, you become Christ, and by faith, you are to grow up in him. By giving and taking, you, you are to give all your heart, your will, your service. Give yourself to him to obey all his requirements. And you must take all. Christ, the fullness of all blessing, 
to abide in your heart, to be your strength, your righteousness, your everlasting helper, to give you power to obey. He gives you the power to obey. Amen? Not on your own. It's Christ in you. Amen? So, you can't do, we know that we can't do works on our own for our own salvation. Amen? We know that. But does, does, that, does that mean that there's, there's not good works outside of that relationship? You know, we had a, I had a lady, um, when Elaine and I were, were in the tabernacle just before we came here, I uh, remember it was a Sabbath afternoon. We were having a Bible study of some sort, and the, and the lady came, and she wasn't an Adventist. She just says, you know, I'm, I'm a morally good person, and I don't really need a church. I'm just out on my own, and, I, and I can, I, I'm fine. She says, um, I'll take you for an instance. I was at a gas station once and uh, paying my bill, and this man had been pumping gas, and he came in the gas station, and he said, I forgot my wallet. I don't have it. And I pumped this gas. That was, before. That was a long time ago, right? <laughs> but you can't do that anymore. But anyway, he, he says, um, um, I don't have any money. And so she, she gave him the money for the gas, 10 bucks or whatever it was. She said, that was a, that was a good deed of mine. You know? And she was playing that. And then she says, and another time I was, uh, well, that is a good deed, right? I mean, it is. And another time she says, I was going to the laundromat and there's this pregnant lady that had a basket of clothes out on, in, at the front. They were all done up and folded and, and she was crying. And I asked her, honey, what's wrong? And she says, well, my ride, was, I called my ride and she was supposed to come in and it's not coming and I'm just stranded here. So she says, well, I'll take you home. Well, that's a good deed, amen? So, that's a good deed, but do those things save you? No, they don't. In fact, let's turn to Matthew. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. We have a red letter Bible. These words are in red. Amen. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Jesus said that he didn't know them, right? He had no experience with them. They weren't in that dependent relationship with him. Christ even called their works what we normally would consider good, he called them evil. Why? Why did, would he do that? Well, according to Jesus, it was, they weren't in the will of his Father. Amen? So, it's about entirely depending on God and listening to him. Now, outside of that relationship, that relationship of faith that we have with him, there, there's no salvation or value in any, any other thing. All right? So, let me illustrate it for you. Um, say you're visiting the Grand Canyon, and you get there kind of late, and you decide at the last minute that you're going to hike down to the bottom of the canyon. It's probably not a good idea, right? <laughs> 
So but after, after several hours and a few, few detours, you find yourself in an unfamiliar place at the bottom of the canyon. And you're off the, you're off the, the beaten path, as it will, as it were. And uh, so in spite of your efforts to retrace your steps, to try to find your way back, it only gets worse. You only get, you only get more lost. Right? You, you, you don't know where you're at. So the sun starts to set, and the light starts to fade, and, there's, and the shadows in the canyon get longer and longer, right? And it finally dawns on you that, that you're completely lost. There's no hope for you. You're lost. Unfortunately, all your efforts and all your actions only made things worse. You're still lost. So more time passes, and in your, in your distress, you finally start calling out into that night air. Right? And you call, and you call, and all you hear back is just your echo. And your, your voice starts to getting hoarse and hoarser. It gets darker and darker, and and you finally started giving up all hope. When all of a sudden, there's a light that fills the canyon wall, right? A park ranger appears, and your heart leaps for joy. Having seen you wander off that path a long time ago, hours earlier, the ranger went and grabbed the necessary items for your rescue and came in after you. And the ranger assures you that everything is going to be all right. He will lead you out to the top of the canyon. All you have to do, all you have to do is everything he asks you to do. And, of course, to trust him. So I've got, I've got two questions. First, when are you rescued? When you reach the top of the canyon or when you decide to follow the ranger? I think we can state that it's when we decide to follow the ranger, amen? Right. The second question is, is that this, by, by following the ranger, are you rescuing yourself? No, you're not. He's rescuing you, amen? You follow the ranger because you're depending on him to take you the rest of the way out. The ranger is in charge of the rescue, right? Your only job, your only works, if you will, are listening to and obeying your rescuer. Amen? You know, in other words, I can't keep the Sabbath to be saved, nor do I keep the Sabbath to keep saved. The reality is, is, is that God, in, in whom I depend, has told me that the Sabbath is for my benefit, right? So I want to remember it. I want to remember it in my heart. Likewise, it, you know, you stay away from certain things not because you're trying to rescue yourself, right? Stay away from those things because the one that, that is actually saving me tells me that I, I should stay away from those things. And if I'm in a dependent relationship with him, I'll do what he says. Amen? You are God's handiwork. He created you to do great things in Christ. You were a part of his plan from the very beginning. Things, things may have happened, right? You might have wandered off the path. But he came to seek and to save you. He's come all the way to that bottom of that Grand Canyon of sin to free you from that sin. But however, to be free from that sin, you've got to completely depend on him. Amen? Then when you're totally 
totally dependent on him. You will do whatever he tells you to do. You will trust and obey. That should have been my closing song, Paula. Trust and obey. You know, maybe you depend on yourself a lot. I know sometimes that I, I think I do. No, I know I do. Maybe you depend on, on a church or on traditions. You know, your actions, how you act, will, 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 will show who you depend on or what you depend on. They may not be evident to the people around you, but God knows. Amen? You can't fool God. God knows. He's the one that designed you. He's the one that created you. And he created you for a special purpose, whatever that is. And, but he's the only one that can rescue you. right? He's the only one that can rescue you out of that dark canyon of sin. And restore you to the purpose that he's created you for. Amen? Nevertheless, you're the only one that can make that choice. Right? God isn't a bully. He won't force you. You have to decide. So will you trust him? Will you abandon your... What, in an ineffective attempts at trying to save yourself, right? And instead fully depend on him? If that's your wish this morning, would you raise your hand? Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we've all become lost in our, in our journey. Uh, we all fall in, into that mire, Father, but we need to depend on you. We need to give you our all. We need to give you our hearts. So this morning, Father, we're asking and we're praying, Father, that you would help us to abide in you always. To never look back, Father, at the old ways that we've been doing, but just to stride forward in our, in our faith, in our relationship with you. I know, Father, that that is where that joy and that peace that goes beyond all understanding lie. And Father, we want that so much. For us and for those loved ones around us, Father, that we can witness to. So help us this morning, Father. Help us to do just that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have a closing hymn this morning. And I forgot what that was. 632, and I have a chorister. Thank, thank you. <laughs> 632. My wife told me to get up and lead out. All right. When my wife speaks to me, she, when she says jump, I say, how high on the way up? <clears throat> Until then, 632. Let's all stand. Let's all stand and sing together. Six hundred thirty-two. My heart can sing when I pause to remember a heartache here is but a stepping stone along a trail that's winding always upward. This troubled world is not my final home. But until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy I'll carry on. Until the day my eyes behold the city until the day God calls me home. The 
things of earth. Well did men lose their value if we recall they're borrowed for a while and things of earth that cause the heart to tremble remembered there will only bring a smile but until then my heart will go on singing until then with joy I'll carry on until the day my eyes behold the city until the day God calls me home. Amen. Please be seated. You know, we, we take a little time here just to reflect on what we've heard this morning and what the Lord has, has, has given into our hearts. We need to know that we need a relationship with him, a real relationship. We need to draw closer to him. Um, and we can't do that even on our own, but we can decide to do that on our own. Amen? That's the choice that we make. So this morning, let's just take a few moments and just reconsecrate ourselves to him. Let him know that, that we want to be near him and we want him in our hearts. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to trust and obey. We know that we're on a journey here. And we know, Father, that we need to stride in our faith. We need to do it energetically. We need to look towards you, Father, for all, for all that we have. Father, thank you for hearing our prayers this morning. Thank you for being with us and thank you for abiding in us. Now as we go out of the sanctuary this morning, Father, we ask that you would give us a blessing also on the